Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a radical expression. I'll be presenting three methods. Let's start with the first one. My first method involves calling this whole thing x. And cubing both sides. When I cube both sides, I would like to use an identity. A plus B quantity cubed can be written as A cubed plus B cubed plus 3AB times A plus B, which is equal to X, right? Okay, so I cube both sides and then root 5 cancels out. 2 plus 2 equals 4, and then I have this expression right here. So from difference of two squares, this is going to become 4 minus 5, which is equal to negative 1. So I have the cube root of negative 1, which is negative 1, multiplied by 3. That is going to be a negative 3x. Of course, we have to multiply by x, and the whole thing is equal to x cubed. So this gives me a cubic equation, which is fairly easy to solve. And this equation is going to come up more than once, but the idea is if you look at the sum of the coefficients uh, for this polynomial, it is zero. So that means that x equals one is a solution. Great, that's very easy. You can find it by inspection. Okay, after figuring out that x equals one, uh, we can either use long division, whatever division, uh, or we can just factor it. Uh, the way I'm going to approach this is I'm going to write it as x cubed minus x plus four x minus four equals zero. From here, I can just take out an x, and then I'll get x plus 1, x minus 1 from difference of two squares, and then plus 4 times the quantity x minus 1. Okay, so now I, x minus 1 is a common factor, obviously, and then the other factor is going to be x squared plus x plus 4 equals 0. Great. So now, we do have... Uh, we do have it factored, and this is uh, this gives us x equals 1. We already know that. The other one is going to give us complex solutions. Let's go ahead and find it by using the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 minus 4ac. So in this case, you're going to be doing basically uh, b squared minus 4ac, which is 4 times 4. That is going to be 16 and divided by 2. Okay, great. So that's the equation we're getting from here, and um, we can just simplify this, but 1 minus negative, 1 minus 16 is negative 15, so that's going to give us negative 1. So the root, square root of negative 15, we're going to write it as plus minus uh, root 15i, okay? So this is going to become negative 1 plus minus root 15i. The reason why we use a plus minus here is because, you know, uh, complex numbers have two square roots, okay? So... These are the solutions, and then uh, this basically gives us all the solutions, uh, right? But here's the thing, like, is the answer complex? What is the answer, right? We were looking for x, and uh, since we're looking for a real number, because the cube root of 2 plus root 5 plus the cube root of 2 minus root 5 is a real number, and it is equal to 1. So the answer is 1. Great. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Now, the second method is kind of similar to the first one, uh, but also at the same time somewhat different. So I have cube root of 2 plus root 5 plus the cube root of 2 minus root 5. So I'm going to use substitution here, obviously. And I'm going to call this A, and I'm going to call this B. Okay, great. Now, what, what am I getting from here, right? My goal is to find A plus B, by the way. I don't know what A plus B is, but I do know that uh, a cubed is equal to 2 plus root 5. I can get rid of the radicals. B cubed is equal to 2 minus root 5. If I add them, I'm getting A cubed plus B cubed equals 4 because the radical 5 is going to cancel out, right? So that's one thing I'm getting from here. And also, since these are conjugates, A and B are conjugates, I can basically multiply them. And when I do, I get the cube root of 4 minus 5, which is equal to negative 1. So I have these two equations, and I'm supposed to find a plus b from here, which is the answer. So I can go ahead and take uh, a plus b and cube it. I don't know what it is, but I can just cube it and use, the, um, use what we have. 
So again, I can write this as a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab times the quantity a plus b. So this comes from the fact, you know, the binomial theorem gives us 3a squared b plus 3ab squared in the middle, but I just factored it out. Great, so now I do know a cubed plus b cubed is equal to 4, and a plus b, I don't know what it is, so we, I guess we have to call this something, let's call it x again. So this is going to be x2. And a cubed plus b cubed is 4, but uh, ab is negative 1, so it's going to be plus negative 1 times, so that's going to be a minus 3x. And guess what? This gives you the exact same cubic equation that we had before, and by solving for x, you're going to get the same answer. So I'm not going to really repeat that because we're basically going to be getting the exact same things from here, and the answer is obviously going to be 1. Okay? So the answer is 1. Let's talk about the third method. Since I'm presenting three methods, I kind of rushed through the first two methods. I hope you don't mind because the third method is kind of more interesting. Okay, and we've done a similar video, so I'm going to include the link uh, down below as well. So the third method involves the following. Instead of dealing with the sum, why don't we take one of the pieces and in the other video, we've done this too. Uh, and the cube root of 2 plus root 5. So I'm looking for nice solutions like with, you know, integer coefficients. So I'm assuming that this, is, this can be written as a plus b root 5, where a and b are rational numbers. If they're not rational numbers, then this is not going to work. So and then I'm going to cube both sides. When I cube both sides, on the right-hand side, I kind of have to use the binomial theorem. And if uh, you just cube a plus b root 5, uh, you're going to get the following. Let me just give it to you a cubed plus 5 root 5b cubed, again using the same formula, plus 3ab multiplied by root 5 times a plus b root 5. So we use the same identity. Now I'm going to uh, rearrange the terms on the right hand side, so kind of put it together like 5b cubed root 5 plus a cubed plus 15ab squared plus 3a squared b root 5. So I'm kind of distributing everything. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put the radical 5 together and the other terms together. So let's go and write it like this. a cubed plus 15ab squared plus 5b cubed plus 3ab a squared b. That should be a, not a squared b. That would be an a squared b. Oopsies. Okay. 3. All right. Let me clean this up and start fresh. So 5b cubed plus 3a squared b multiply by radical 5, that is equal to 2 root 5. Now, at this point, you can safely say that, hey, this needs to be a 2 if there are rational solutions, and this needs to be a 1, because I do have 1 root 5 on the right-hand side. So this gives me a system, right? This gives me a nice system. So we're going to solve this system. Now, this is like, uh, I think I used the wrong word for the differential equation that is supposed to be homogeneous. This is like an homogeneous equation. Therefore, uh, replacing B with something like Ka is going to work. The reason being is because I have A cubed, I have AB squared. They're all cubic, B cubed and A squared B. So we can do this. That is going to give us um, a nicer uh, solution. So this is going to give me A cubed plus 15 K squared A cubed equals 2 and 5k cubed a cubed plus 3k a cubed equals 1. Now at this point I can just go ahead and use factoring. I can pull out an a cubed, that's going to give me 1 plus 15k squared equals 2. And again I can take out a cubed and that's going to give me 5k cubed plus 3k equals 1. When you divide these equations side by side, that's when the miracles happen because a cubed is going to cancel out. And from here, we get like a nice equation. Let's go ahead and distribute this. We get 10k cubed plus 6k equals 1 plus 15k squared. Now, this is a cubic equation. It's not the same cubic that we got before. Maybe it is, sort of. But this is a different cubic. And it's solving this cubic is kind of easy because if you pay attention to the sum of the coefficients, again, on, the, uh, on either side, you notice that the sum of the coefficients is the same. It's 16. That means k equals 1 is a possible solution, right? That means that since we were able to write b as ka, that means b equals a in this case. Of course, a and b are something different that we talked about. It's not the x, but it's going to help us find it. Since b is equal to a, and I do have, you know, one of the equations I can basically just, uh, you know, use. Uh, let's say we use the first one, 
a cubed plus 15 a b squared equals 2 and i do know that b is equal to a so let's replace b with a that's going to give me 15 a cubed and this is going to give me 16 a cubed equals 2 and a cubed equals 1 eighth and from here we get a equals 1 half great since a, a is equal to 1 half b is also equal to 1 half because a and b are equal great now let's go ahead and put it together remember we we assume that the cube root of 2 plus root 5 can be written as a plus b root 5 so we can write it as 1 half plus 1 half root 5 but if you think about the binomial theorem the cube root of the conjugate is also going to be the conjugate of the answer so it's going to be like 1 half minus 1 half root 5 when you add these two together which is what we're looking for, right? We were basically looking for this sum. And that's going to give us 1 half plus 1 half, which is equal to 1. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.